Hey folks, it's Hard Wolf. Welcome. I was asked in a recent video by Chris Ridley, a regular uh, commentator and viewer, what my most anticipated title of 2021 was going to be. And I think at this point we have, um, it's getting close to the end of 2020. We had the ability to look forward and I figured this would be a good time to do a video on that and talk about some of my reasons why I'm interested in these particular things. So we have three games for us here and, and not in a planned way. Uh, these were were all kind of put together. Um, there's like one from each major wargaming publisher, at least major wargaming publisher that I'm clued into and keep relatively close track of. One from GMT, one from Multiman Publishing, and one from Compass Games. Um, so let's uh, let's hop over here and uh, see what we have. All right. So the first of these is one that I was sufficiently excited about to do its own video on, and this is Mark Herman's Pacific War. This is coming up from GMT. It made its P5. 500 number in record time, literal record time, and it now has over 2,000 um, pre-orders. Uh, this is a game about the war in the Pacific, 1941 to 1945, um, and it is really an operational game rather than a strategic game that some people would like to think that it should be. Um, and I think one of the things that we're going to see in this product is uh, a revised uh, campaign game, the, the grand campaign game where you're fighting the entire war out. Um, I, I think that can probably be made to work a little better than it did historically in the classic game. I do have a copy of Victory Game Pacific War, but I have never to this date played it. Um, at this point, it seems like a good idea to wait until this comes out to uh, to invest the time in it because it is a heavy system. Uh, it is going to take a significant uh, investment in time and and synapses to uh, to really get into it. So at this point, we might as well wait and enjoy the benefits of the the greatly improved graphics that we are going to get minimally uh, with this new edition of Pacific War. Now I don't know that it's going to come out in 2021, but like I said, it made its P500 number in record time, and pretty much it's just waiting on Mark. My hope is that it will in fact be out in 2021. If I had to bet, I would not put any money on that, but it, it could roll over in 2022. But that depends on Mark and how uh, how fast he can complete the work um, on this uh, this highly anticipated game. And I, I, I think it can generally be agreed to be highly anticipated since it made its P500 number in something like 45 minutes or something crazy like that. And now it's over 200, which is a number we typically see with like new commands and colors uh, products and stuff like that. Uh, it's a super high number. It's also going to be the first GMT game in a four inch box, which excites me. We actually have a chance to fit the whole game in the box uh, after it's punched and organized and counter trays. I think that's great. I'm happy to see um, GMT making that move and also happy to see that the uh, the next expansion for Space Empire, Space Empire is all good things, which is a great title by the way, um, is also going to be in a 4-inch box. You're not going to be able to fit all your Space Empire stuff in a 4-inch box, but hey, you know, I, um, I appreciate that GMT is moving in, I think, the right direction with boxing their products. Um, I'm annoyed when we consistently see games produced by major publishers especially um, in box and shipped in boxes that are way too small to fit all the components in an organized way that that irritates me i mean it's not like a world-ending catastrophe right it's a good problem to have i suppose but um it's it's annoying and I, i'm glad to see the gmt is addressing that so product number two is as you might expect if you are a fan of this channel is Hood Strikes North. I was actually hoping this would be out in 2020. Um, it made its number quite a long time ago, but I believe the terrain has left the station on that, and I think there's no hope that it will be out in 2020. I think the best we can hope for is early 2021 at this point. Um, this is, of course, the latest entry, or will be the latest entry, in the Great Campaigns of the American Civil War series, which is my favorite or one of my favorite game series, game systems. This is one map... Um, relatively low footprint and low complexity um, entry in the series that's intended as a good stepping on point. Um, I want to be clear, however, um, what I mean by that, because some people have drawn the wrong conclusions from hearing that about Hood Strikes North. Um, this is not like Hood GBACW starter kit, right? It's not stripped down rules. It's got the same standard rules as everything else. It's a relatively compact campaign. It all fits on one map. Um, other than that, it's pretty much just another 
Great Campaigns of the American Civil War um, game. I mean, it's not any smaller than or less complicated than, um, say, Stonewall's Last Battle that covers the Chancellorsville campaign. So this is not dumbed down. It's not stripped down. It's not uh, retrofitted to make it applicable to stupid people or anything like that. It's just another Great Campaigns of the American Civil War game that happens to be one map so that it won't be $140, which is the next cheapest Great Campaigns of the American Civil War game that's available right now, much less if you go out on the secondary market and try and hunt down the old ones. So I'm really looking forward to this. This was played on multiple tables the entire time at Winter Offensive last year, or this year, I guess, before the plague. Um, and the people playing it at the time really seemed to like it. Uh, and these, you know, these are the pretty hardcore uh, Great Campaigns of the American Civil War guys who show up at that thing and play that the entire time pretty much so i am looking very much forward to this um i don't want to rank these but i've been you know i've been pumped on about this since oh i was told that it was in the in the pipeline which was some time ago um and thirdly let's talk about the entry from compass this is gilbert collins war for america and there's some really interesting things happening here this is a uh, i'll show you the map or the image of the map anyway um I think a pretty nice looking map for one thing is a point to point map. It's a card driven game. Um, Gilbert, of course, has his own YouTube channel, which you should be a subscriber to. Go check that out if uh, you haven't already. Uh, Gilbert is also the designer of Mr. Madison's War from GMT, um, which is a pretty well regarded game. Gets a lot of play at WBC, I know. Um, this is interesting because, for one thing, I don't have a lot of games about the American Revolution. Um, I have Liberty or Death. And games about the entire American Revolution. That's I think that's it, actually. Um, we've got some, some tactical stuff, too. Um, but uh, th this is really interesting because it's going to be, you know, it's, a, it's a, like I said, it's a card-driven point-to-point game, which is not something I'm normally super big on. But it's from a Canadian designer. And, I mean, I've watched a lot of Gilbert's videos. The game looks interesting. He has presented this in a couple of videos already. Um it's from a Canadian designer, which I think promises us a, a different point of view on the American Revolution than we typically get from American designers. It's not a particularly rare topic uh, for American designers, uh, but I'm really very interested in seeing a game from the British perspective, which is Gilbert's goal here. Uh, so I'm super looking forward to this, and it seems weird, actually. It's, like it's an American Revolution game. This is not a period I'm like completely out of, but it's not one of my, you know, favorite periods necessarily either. Nevertheless, I think this is a game to keep a close eye on. I think it is going to be a super interesting title uh, when it comes out. Um, and I believe this will be out in 2021 as well. Um, so uh, I'd like to open up the floor to you. Um, what uh, are your most anticipated war games or conflict simulations that you think will be out in 2021? Um, or, you know, Best guess 2021 is sufficient in this case. Leave your answers in the comments below. Be sure to uh, like the video if you've enjoyed watching it. Subscribe to the channel. There are links to the Patreon if you'd like to support Ardwolf's Lair uh, through that method and to the Ardwolf's Lair merch store in the video description. So check those things out as well. I'd like to thank you for watching. And until next time, happy wargaming.